Welcome to the first of two videos on advanced filtering. The first topic I want to talk about are pairs. Pairs are special properties which represent two fields such as a source and a destination. By filtering with a pair property, you can look for frames which have a value equal to either of the two associated fields. So in this case, the typical example is an IPv4 address. So when we look at IPv4 addresses, we see that there's normally a source and a destination address. If I'm to right click on the source address and add as display filter, you'll see that it sets the filter to IPv4.sourceAddress equal, and that's the value of the source address. Now if I apply this filter, you'll notice that we see traffic, but in only one direction. You'll see that the destination here is always workgroup, which is a resolve name. But in most cases, what we want to do is we want to look at traffic in both directions. So as I mentioned, we have these special properties called pairs. And in the case of IPv4 and Ethernet, they're both called address. So now, if I want to create a filter to see traffic in both directions based on that address, I can type that in right there. And once I do this, you'll see that I'm able to get traffic in both directions where the workgroup is the source or the destination. And I can put multiple of these together. For instance, say I wanted to see all the traffic between two IP addresses. I could say, okay, well, I want to see and IPv4 dot address equal equal and the destination address I'm interested in. And now that'll see just that traffic between those two machines. Another place where we use the pair property is in TCP ports. So I can look at all traffic that's on port 80. And this, of course, if you're familiar with port 80 traffic, this is HTTP type traffic. So what you see is one of them, the source or destination port, will be 80. And here's the port 80 that we did our filtering on. Now you can also do other operands when you're doing filtering other than just equal equal. So for instance, I can do a filter where I want to see all IP all ports that are greater than a thousand. And what you'll see here is that it did find some traffic greater than a thousand. Though what might not be expected is that in this case, one of the addresses is greater than 1,000, but the other one is lower. And that's just the way the port pair works. If you wanted to do both addresses greater than 1,000, you would have to explicitly put the ports separately. So in other words, you'd have to say tcp.sourcePort greater than 1,000 and tcp.destinationPort greater than 1,000. And now you'll see traffic where both ports meet that criteria. And here's an example. Now we can also accept other operators. For instance, you can use the not operator. Since let's say we wanted to see all port traffic that wasn't port 80. So this filter goes ahead and returns all these frames and you can see here that the traffic, the ports that are returned, neither of them are port 80. Now what's interesting here is this particular filter will return only TCP traffic. So what if I wanted to see all traffic that wasn't HTTP traffic? This is a little bit different. And what I'm going to show you now is a standard filter we have to filter out traffic. So in this case, we want to filter out all remote desktop type traffic. And so I'm going to select this filter. And what you'll notice is, is the difference is that we have parens, which is another thing you can use in your filter. And it's separated by an equal equal. But we now put the not symbol outside the expression. And what this does is it says,
go ahead and find all t any kind of traffic, and if it equals that port, take it out. So let's go ahead and remove this and go back to our our TCP port filter on 80, except we're going to do not equal 80. We're going to surround it in parens. I'm sorry, we're going to make it equal to 80. We're going to surround it in parens, and we're going to say not equal. And now you'll see the difference is you'll see ARP traffic, STDP traffic, but along with other non-HTTP traffic on port 80. So if I went down the list here, I'd find an example of port 80 traffic, I mean non-port 80 traffic that was also TCP. So you'll see that this includes more than just TCP traffic. So now let's move on to another operator you can use. And this is useful in subnetting. And subnetting is when a TCP address is used for a specific network, a physical location, and you've subnetted that location to always use the same a couple of octets based on the type TCP address you're using. So again, I'm going to go to standard filters, and we have one called IPv4 subnet. And if we look at this closely, what you'll notice is that we have the AND operator, but only one of them. If you have two together, it's just a regular Boolean type operation. But in this case, it's a bitwise operator, meaning that we're going to bitwise and these two values together before doing the comparison. And what that does is in this case, we're ending it with 255.255. And when you translate that octet to binary, those are all ones. The second two octets are zero, so those end up getting anded out. So given an IP address of 10.53.5.6, the two lower octets will get zeroed out before the comparison occurs. And therefore, we're going to only return traffic based on this subnet. Now you might ask, why aren't you using the the address property pair that we talked about previously, well, the way we expand it out does not work in this particular uh, case. So you're not able to use the port property when, you, when looking for subnets. Well, that's all for now. I hope you learned something.